Without a plan, revision might be stressful and lead to poor exam results. In this podcast, I guide students through one part of such a plan, study resources. First, we cover the theory for each topic, and then I suggest questions to practice acquired skills. Join me in making your exam experience a success story. A quick disclaimer. OpenAI's large-scale language generation tool ChatGPT may have been used to draft some content in this episode. StudySquare LTD has adapted the content and takes full responsibility for the publication. Okay, so let's have a look at resultant force. The resultant force acting on an object is the combination of all the forces acting on an object. The resultant force acting on a specific direction is determined by adding all the forces in that direction together and subtracting the ones that are in the opposite direction. For example, a car exerting a forward thrust force of 2000 newtons and experience a backwards frictional force of 500 newtons has a resultant force of 2000 newtons minus 500 newtons equals to 1500 newtons in its direction of motion. A free body diagram is a diagram which shows all the forces acting on an object. The object is commonly represented by a box or a dot. The forces acting on the object are represented by labeled arrows pointing in the direction in which they act. The question that relates to this theory is, sketch a free body diagram for a box lying on a slope of 30 degrees to the horizontal, given that the forces acting on it are its downward weight, the normal reaction force from the ground perpendicular to the slope, and the frictional force up the slope. There is a link in the show notes of this episode in case you want to double check the answer for this question. Do you know anyone who could benefit from listening to this episode? Share it with them. That's how we can support more students in preparing for their exams. Also, if you like listening to this podcast, it would be awesome if you left a five-star rating or a review. So let's learn more about Newton's laws. Newton's first law states that a body will remain at equilibrium unless it is acted upon by an external resultant force. A state of equilibrium is a state where there is no resultant force acting on an object and thus it is moving at a constant velocity or is at rest. This means that the body will remain at rest or will continue moving at a constant velocity unless a resultant force is exerted on it. Newton's second law states that the acceleration acting on a body is directly proportional to the resultant force acting on it, in the direction of the force, and is inversely proportional to the mass of the body. This can also be expressed by the formula F equals ma, where F is the resultant force, m is the mass of the object, and a is the acceleration in the direction of the force. This means that as the resultant force on a body increases, its acceleration will increase and vice versa. Newton's third law states that if an object exerts a force on another object, the second object will exert an equal and opposite force on the first object. These pairs of forces will be of the same type of force and of the same size, however they act on different objects and in opposite directions. The question that relates to this theory is, explain Newton's first law in terms of the formula F equals ma. If you are unsure about how to solve this problem, you can visit the page of this topic, which is in the show notes. Many students revise for exams without a plan. This might result in sporadic learning, poor exam results, and worse career opportunities. However, you can avoid that. Generate your personal exam revision plan on studysquare.co.uk forward slash plan. Now let's go through some theory about vehicle motion. The thinking distance of a car is the distance the car travels through while the driver decides they need to apply the brakes. The time it takes for them to do this is called the reaction time. The braking distance of a car is the distance the car travels through after the brakes are applied until the car comes to a stop. The sum of these two distances is called the stopping distance. There are different factors which influence the thinking and braking distance. The thinking distance depends on the reaction time of the driver distractions, tiredness, and being under the influence of substances are all factors which may affect the reaction time of a driver. The braking distance depends on the conditions of the road and the car. Adverse weather conditions may cause the road to be slippery, icy, or wet, meaning that the braking distance is greater. 
Similarly, if car's components are not functioning as they should be, it may take longer for the car to come to a stop. Both thinking and braking distance are directly proportional to the speed of the car. That is, the faster the car is traveling, the greater the thinking and braking distances are. Car safety features are installed to increase the time taken in which a collision takes place. The greater the time taken for a collision to occur, the less force will be felt. One way in which this is done is by building a crumple zone at the front of the car. This area of the car slowly crumples during a collision, thus extending the time taken for the collision to occur. Similarly, seat belts increase the time taken for a body to stop moving when a collision occurs, and thus reducing the force endured by it. Airbags provide a soft surface for a body to come into contact with during a collision, while also extending the time taken for the body to stop moving. The question that relates to this theory is, explain how being tired affects the thinking distance of a car. If you want to see the answer and the solution for this question, use the link in the show notes of this episode. Did you know that we have other podcasts for math and science? If you are interested to learn more, search for Revision with Jonas on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Okay, so let's have a look at weight. Weight is the gravitational pull exerted on an object. It is a force and it is given in newtons. Weight can be calculated using W equals mg, where W is the weight, m is mass, and g is the gravitational field strength. Objects which are on Earth experience a gravitational field strength of 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Weight is a vector quantity as opposed to mass, which is a scalar. Mass is a measure of how much matter is in an object, and it is usually given in kilograms. The question that relates to this theory is, describe the difference between weight and mass. Now, if you want to access the solution and the answer for this question, use the link in the show notes. Now that we have covered the theory, it is time to practice solving related problems. So head to studysquare.co.uk forward slash resources and try answering questions on this topic. I hope you have a great week ahead. And until next time.